All right, to get going in circuits, we're actually not gonna just jump in there and define circuit uh, variables and symbols and start doing circuits. We're actually gonna take a very uh, physically uh, defined approach. We're gonna really try to build our intuition about the concepts, and then we'll draw all the standard circuit stuff, okay? So we're gonna start with how current Now you might ask, why would it split? Here's why. We're going to make it go through something that looks like this. Okay, so for this discussion, we don't care about the battery that made the current go. We just say there is some current flowing right here called I1, all right? And when it comes out, we would have some current here, I4, and the current has to split up. At this junction, if it's going this way, some goes to the top, I2, uh, and some goes to the bottom, I3. You'll notice I jump from capital I to lowercase i. Just get used to it. One way we try to be consistent is to use capital when it's a constant variable, and if it's something that's changing in time, maybe you would call that a lowercase variable. So, okay, so I will stick to my own rules. And I will switch this to um, big eyes because these are constant, steady state, not changing currents. Right? I1, I2, I3, I4. Physically, what would happen? Well, let's see. So we would describe it with something called Kirchhoff's uh, junction rule. Okay. And the rule written is actually pretty simple. You find a junction, and you say the sum of the currents in the junction equals the sum of the currents out of the junction. Because this rule is really just a statement of the conservation of charge. Currents flow a charge. If a certain amount of charge flows in, it has to flow out. So you actually have to look at the directions of the current flow. First, let's identify the junctions. Here's a junction. At every junction, you can apply Kirchhoff's junction rule. Here's another junction. And you can write in, uh, the ins have to equal the outs. Or another way to write it is a sum in plus a sum out has to be zero, where the outs are negative. In is positive, out is negative. Or here you can just say the magnitude in equals the magnitude out. I think I copied the book, so that's why I think I wrote it that way. Anyway, at this junction, what is going in? I1 is going in, because that would go right there. What is coming out? I2 plus I3. 2 plus I3. These are sum symbols if you're not familiar. Those are big sigmas. That means sum. So Kirchhoff's junction rule told us that I1 equals I2 plus I3. And because we applied it right here. You can also just sort of use your intuition and conservation of charge and say, oh yeah, we're right there. I2 must be I1 plus I3. I3. Then you can also look at here and say I in there is I2 plus I3 equals I4. That would be the second application of the junction rule. And you can use a little powers of algebra here to realize that, oh yeah, I1 equals I4, which also matches your intuition. If a certain current flows in here, splits, comes back together, it's going to be the same current going this way. Because conservation of charge, current isn't created or destroyed. It just splits up and comes back together. So that's just a simple description without even doing a formal circuit of the junction rule. Now let's look, though, let's apply what we know uh, about calculating things. So let's say we have um, identical wire uh, length and diameter. Um, at the top and the bottom. Okay, so I'm talking up here and down there. Everything is the same. And let's say length, comma, resistivity, comma. Got my Harvard comma there. And uh, that's all they ever got. And diameter. So basically identical wires, top and bottom. All right? And we can call those, let's calculate, what is the resistance of those wires? Why not? R2 and R3. Well, we know it's rho L over A. 
So they all have the same resistivity rho. Same geometry means they have the same length. Um, uh, L over, and the same cross section A, L over A. So by telling you the same length, rho, resistivity, and diameter, that's basically telling you they had the same resistance. Okay. So let's see. Um, another aspect we can think about is what about the delta V? What is the potential drop across those two wires? Or I'll say potential difference or voltage drop. So the potential difference across this one and the potential difference across that one, what would it be? Well, it would be the same because the potential difference is just the difference. It's an electrostatic potential, even though we're kind of flowing around exactly electrostatic, but we're at steady state currents, so kind of the same thing. The difference between two places. Well, the difference between here and here is the same if you go through the top path or the bottom path. Since we are at steady state current, it's kind of like electrostatics. So therefore, you can say it doesn't matter what path you go. The delta V, the potential difference is the same. So we could say then that delta V, uh, if we call these A and B, so delta V from A to B is equal to the delta V top is equal to the delta V bottom. Those are going to be the same because of how we understand potential difference. That idea of a potential field that you used earlier in the class still applies when you have wires and batteries. It's still a field. Right. So that's the potential difference. So now we could actually start to try to say something about the current. How much current goes through each one? Well, then we would apply uh, Ohm's law. So Ohm's law, when you're going into circuits, and we'll do this formally later, can be applied to any little piece of a circuit. I could take this little piece of wire and apply Ohm's law to it, okay? Anywhere I go. So what we're gonna do is apply Ohm's law to the top path and to the bottom path and see what we can say about the current. So if we want to get uh, I2, say, so the current I2 up top, V equals IR, so it's delta V, the potential drop over the resistance. So the potential drop is delta VAB, And what was the resistance? B over R2, right? Because that's the resistance of two. And then we might also calculate I3 there in the bottom. Same delta V, we just said. It's the potential between the same two places over the resistance of three. So R3. Right, and then what you notice is, oh wait, R2 equals R3. Oh yes. So those are all equal. So what we can tell when we look at this is that the same current goes in each branch, okay? Now, to end this one, let's think what is always true and what is just sometimes true. We give you many laws and rules in physics and sometimes we have to be clear, this is for this special case, this is always permanent. So this, always true. This is conservation of charge. This is the junction rule. We use this all the time. But the fact that the resistances came out the same, that's just because these have the exact same properties. The potentials being the same for this geometry is always true. If the wires had had different lengths or shapes or resistances, it wouldn't matter. The difference between two, delta V for each of these had to be the same because of the topology that we drew here. So always true just because of this case, sort of always true, but it, you know, I mean, you could draw something weird and this, Again, only true because we drew the, these have the same geometry and resistivity. Okay, so just because you have a junction, they will not always split with equal current. Here, we just set it up so that it would split with equal current. We'll show you ones in a minute uh, where the current doesn't come out equal.